So, here's a bit of a hot take. I actually like the grills on the new G80 M3. No, I'm not joking. I actually like the kidney grills on the G80 M3. But how is that possible? A hardcore BMW enthusiast is not going against BMW's polarizing new design? No, I actually like the direction. And it's not for the reason you guys might think. In today's video, I'll explain exactly what I mean. So the last few weeks have been extremely difficult for me. I've been trying to avoid every single article, every single blog post, every single video on the new G80 M3. I didn't want it to fog up my judgment or my first impressions of the car. And you know how that goes. You'll watch a video with a very brilliant creator, very persuasive, their opinion starts to rub off on you and you haven't even experienced the car for yourself. So I wanted to avoid all of that all together. Today is actually my very first time seeing a G80 M3 in person, and we're actually gonna be able to take a drive with it later on. Massive thanks to the guys at Precision Sport Industries for allowing me to film their new M3. They are a BMW service and performance shop located in the Central Florida area. Make sure to check out their YouTube channel as they will be modifying this M3 from top to bottom. I'll leave links down in the description below. Let's go ahead and start with the exterior of the car. I'll give you guys my first impressions. Uh, the Aleman Green Metallic, that paint job is absolutely amazing, especially in person, guys. You know, cars typically under the direct sunlight don't really look that good, that flattering, but this paint job is an exception. When you got the sun shining directly at it, it actually looks very, very good. You can see the pearl. Let me give you guys some angles. Check it out. It looks absolutely amazing, guys. Absolutely amazing, and it matches perfectly with the interior of the car, which I'll show you guys a little bit later. Another thing that really pops are the wheels here. These are um, new style for the new G80 M3. These are the optional 825 M wheels, 20 inch in the back, 19 inch in the front. Yeah, that's right. Two different sizes, 20 in the back, 19 in the front. I think the wheel combinations of different sizes is gonna start becoming a norm here for BMW M cars going forward. The only notable car that had a similar setup was the M4 GTS where it had smaller wheel up front with like a slightly taller uh, sidewall for the, for the tires and then a, a lower profile in the rear. I mean, BMW M has given an explanation why they did this and it makes sense. It's very complicated. Um, from what I was able to read, essentially with the front, um, when they do a, a smaller wheel and a taller uh, sidewall here, it bridges the gap between like you know, daily driving suitability and track oriented usage as well. As far as the back, I don't know, it gets a little bit more complicated. I'll link a video to the BMW M. They do a fantastic job of explaining why they did it. As far as the looks between, you know, the wheel sizes, I guess it's very subjective. If you're a very like OCD minded person, then it might bug you because, you know, the tires up front have a taller sidewall versus the ones in the back that have a thinner sidewall. And then smaller wheel, bigger wheel. It kind of bugs me, I'm not gonna lie. But that's because I know there's a difference. Most people who would probably look at this car would not know there's a difference, especially when you look at it from, let's say, a good five to 10 feet. I mean, function over form, right? Would you rather have performance over looks or looks over performance? I'm actually very curious to know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comment section below if you guys like the 19s up front, 20s in the back. Does that look all right? Oh yeah, and check this out, guys. 275.35 in the front, guys. 275.35, that's pretty aggressive coming from factory. I believe the previous generation F80, F82 was 255. So can you imagine what you can do with aftermarket? You can get super aggressive with this car, guys. There's plenty of room under the fenders. Looking at the third quarterback here, the fenders. This has to be one of my favorite, favorite design cues of the car. You know, with the M4, the G82, um, the lines kind of smoothly lead up to like this bulging part right here, right? But you see with the G80, it's like very consistent, 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 and then bam, super aggressive right here in the back, down to the back of the car. You know, kind of reminds me like a Latina woman's body. It's just like small waist, small waist, small waist, small waist, bam, thighs, and then backside. Like, look at it, guys. It's a very sharp transition, and very sharp. I like that. And of course, standard, you're gonna get the shadow line trim on the exterior, black. You got the black here on the side skirts, and then you have it here leading to the rear bumper 
slash diffuser, which I'll show you guys here in a bit. And then you have the side gill here, grill, gill, whatever you want to call it. Not entirely sure if that's a fake vent or not. Hard to tell because it kind of goes in there, but looks very, very nice. All right, moving on to the back. This is where it most closely resembles the lower trim models like the M340i, the tail lights and stuff like that. I will say this, the carbon fiber diffuser that's used here alongside these sleeved massive exhaust tips, real exhaust tips, by the way, they're not fake. This looks extremely aggressive. It's, it's something like you feel like you would get with an aftermarket option. This comes factory. Well, obviously it's an option, but it's directly from BMW M. This looks really good. So you got the shadow line all the way around and then you got the carbon fiber diffuser. Massive guys, massive tips. Like I can't really emphasize that enough. They're absolutely massive. Very, very nice touch. Tail lights, I mean, pretty familiar with them with the lower trims. You have the chunk spoiler here. It looks very, very nice. Uh, there's a small groove like a cutout here. That's gonna go ahead and match with the, the roof, the carbon roof as well. So for uh, aerodynamics. So yes, the car has an exterior carbon fiber package directly from BMW. It looks extremely, extremely good. Um, it's pretty hefty on price though. I think it's like $4,500 or something like that. Let me go take a look. There you go, here's the sticker price here. Uh, M Carbon Exterior Package, $4,700, which looks extremely good. Actually has some carbon fiber in the front as well, which, which I'm gonna show you guys here in a bit. Oh yeah, and for those of you guys that are curious, um, for this spec.g80, here's the price, $85,940. Is it worth it? I don't know, you guys tell me. All right. The moment you guys have been waiting for. Let's move on to the front of the car. <laughs> Here is the front of the G80 M3. It's not a surprise to most of you guys. This has been leaked for a very long time. A lot of you guys did not want to believe that this was happening. BMW stuck to their guns and they followed through. I think the headlights look pretty cool. Very different. It's going to get some time uh, to get used to, but I think I like it. Um, it does have the laser headlights, which I think it's an option. Of course, down here, the brake ducts, carbon fiber. I think this looks freaking phenomenal. This looks very good. I like that a lot. And then we have the shadow line trim here on the bottom right. And you also have it down here on the bottom left with some real, you know, aerodynamic stuff here on the side of the on the side of the bumper. All right, let's talk a little bit about the kidney grills on the new G80, G82, M3 and M4. Uh, kidney grills, lung grills, they're pretty freaking massive, that's for sure. Guys, I wasn't joking when I said I like the grills on the G80 M3. Design-wise, I don't totally agree with the kidney grills. Um, I think there's room for improvement for sure. But the reason I like this direction of BMW and the fact that they just kind of push through all the noise and all the negative criticism is that they're they're taking a chance and trying something new they're trying to innovate um and they're trying to kind of you know take it a little bit outside of the box i think that a lot of people here at least in the united states we've become so conservative with every design has to be almost the same it has to be very safe very normal just look at places like china which of course i think bmw is trying to cater to with this polarizing design um they have different styled cars over there very polarizing very different very unique and you know what for the most part residents there accept that and cars don't really look the same it seems like most companies are just absorbing very simplistic safe designs because they're scared of what i guess loyal fans or people are going to think about them bmw decided to just go straight tunnel vision BMW decided to do something a little different. And you know what? Change is never an easy thing for a lot of people. And obviously that applies to the car industry as well. Do I 100% like this design of the kidney grills? No, I don't like 100%, but I like the direction that BMW took it to. It's very different. And I like that they did this and they, they didn't go with something more conservative. You drive this car around and it breaks so many necks bystanders are always looking phones are all taking pictures videos whatever it is to make fun of it to praise it bad publicity good publicity it works the attention is there and i'm sure that with time bmw is going to go ahead and update it for the lci maybe it'll look a lot more refined and by then i think a lot of you guys will get used to the design and actually appreciate it just like the supra they got a lot of flack in the very beginning like the early stages of its development you know, a lot of people love the A90 Supra now, A91. They love that car. And now 
nobody really talks bad about it unless you're a hardcore Toyota boy that wants a 2J, swap it. So is it true that the front end of the new M3 and M4 look a lot better in person? I would have to 100% agree with that. You see, what you guys see on video right now is not 100% representation of what it looks like in person. Part of the reason is because I'm using a wide angle lens on my Sony camera. A lot of people that use cell phones like the new iPhone and Android, they have access to a third camera that has wide angle and it kind of distorts the front of the car. The reason people use that is so they can fit as much as the car into the frame, but then it makes the grill look weird. For instance, if I go up front right here, at the widest possible angle. How ridiculous does that look? It legit looks like a pig. It looks like a pig, but that's not what it looks like in person. It's just the camera itself and the, the wide angle lens that I'm using. But then if you look at it from like right here, uh, let's see, like right there, it didn't look too bad. In person, it still looks a lot better. Uh, this lens is distorting it. But anyways, it just kind of depends what angle you look at it from right there right there from right there I, I actually think this is a very good angle because like the indentations on the hood kind of leads to the kidney grills this looks solid i like this a lot and if nobody's a fan of this new polarizing design from bmw then why are you guys supporting bmw with your money right everybody hates it online forums videos yet you guys are pulling out your cash your wallet and you're buying the damn car Money talks, bullshit walks, just saying. One thing that should be appreciated about these kidney grills is that the entire surface is utilized for cooling. Way too many times have I seen other auto manufacturers make cars with large grills where maybe 20% of the surface is functional and the rest is covered in plastic. Also, the front end conversion many people are talking about is nonsense. If you're looking to buy a G80, why would you want to make it look like something it's not, like an M8? My belief is that with time, most people will start to accept them and maybe even like them, sort of like how I do. Under the hood, you'll find a super capable S58 engine, turbocharged 3 liter inline 6, which puts out 473 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque, according to BMW. But you guys know how that goes. It probably makes more. I really did like how it looked underneath the hood. Everything seemed very clean and sleek, and the way the brace bars were placed looked pretty cool as well. Moving into the interior, the Colony orange and black leather paired with the carbon seats looked amazing. Getting in can be challenging for some because of how aggressive the bolsters are, but once you get in, the seats feel great. The leg divider definitely takes some time getting used to but honestly i wouldn't have it any other way the all digital gauge cluster and touchscreen infotainment give the interior a modern look the six-speed manual transmission will bring a smile to your face and the customizable driving option makes the car very versatile There it is guys. So I got the keys to the G80 M3. I'm very excited because something like this doesn't normally happen in my life where a premier BMW car, you know, releases and I get to drive it a few weeks after that. Uh, so yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and turn on the car and I'll give you guys my impressions. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, this, this feels very, very nice. Even though the car has, you know, aggressive 19 inch wheels up front and the 20 inch wheels with the lower profile tires in the rear, this is very smooth. I mean, I do have all the settings right now on comfort, steering, throttle response, uh, suspension and stuff like that. It feels very nice. The car is still currently through its like break-in period. So there's not much I could do with the car. I can't really push it like that. Plus I think it's limited from BMW. So uh, once you hit the 1200 miles, you go in to BMW, drop the car off for its service. And I think they might switch some settings on so it's a little more aggressive. They add burbles and stuff like that. I'm not sure if that's just uh, if that's just rumors, but that's what I've been able to read online recently. I gotta say, I feel very snug in these seats. Uh, these are the carbon and performance seats and uh, you got the divider between your legs. It kind of keeps you in like a perfect seating position. Uh, I think the bolsters are adjustable as well. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. I think they're adjusted for Sean, the owner of PSI. You know, it's funny is I'm looking to my left right now and people just keep pointing and looking because it's, uh, 
it's a new platform and it's a very polarizing design right so people to the right are looking the ones to their left are looking they got their phones out taking pictures it's uh it's very interesting that's for sure but anyways going back to the seats i feel very very hugged uh your body's not it's not to go anywhere when you're doing some uh some twisties or you're going around turns at speed yeah body's gonna stay planted that's for sure the really cool thing about these seats is that you still have like the heated option so you don't really lose all the functions i don't think you have ventilation uh but you do have the heated options and it is fully um electronic so you can adjust you know various things you can move it forward backwards up and down it's all electronic so it saves weight but you still have obviously the technology that bmw is known for and i know everybody's turning around looking at this car breaking their necks it could be because of the olive man uh green uh paint job it could be the design it could just be because it's a brand new model and not a lot of people have seen it i don't know i think bmw did a really good job i know it's a very unfavorable opinion uh and it's a hot take people won't agree with me but i think it's a i think it's a step in the right direction kill me in the comment section that's fine i just um i like when companies innovate and decide to take risks steering wheel feels very nice too as well uh this car when you're rolling gears when, you know you're going through the gears it's very easy it's, it's, it's very easy to do it um the clutch is uh very like noob friendly it's not super grabby um the car is extremely smooth but the dial in the settings to make it a little bit more aggressive here in a little bit once i get out of this little trafficy part of where i'm at but uh it feels very very nice i can so see myself driving long distances with this car even with the carbon seats it's not too bad yes it's a little bit tight but it's comfortable it's not something that i don't know it's, it's not annoying it also has uh by default it has automatic rev matching as well which is pretty sweet if you don't want to blip your own throttle and match the you know revs the revs yourself i'll do it for you look fourth third second you hear it i don't have to do the rev match and the car does it for me automatically perfectly too look at that <laughs> What's crazy is that the, the the cabin is extremely quiet this is almost like m5 like in here comfort wise crazy to think about that but lots of technology here uh, the all digital cl uh, cluster all digital infotainment here and the touch screen as well it's very sleek um the color of the interior is so unique too it's, that's something that's very catchy with this car is the the combination between the alaman green and uh kayalami orange with black uh, it looks really good they're probably like looking through the rearview mirror and then see and they're seeing those massive kidney grills and they're like what the hell is that <laughs> right because that's the very first thing people talk about when they see this car in person the grills they're massive you know you thought the ones on like the x7 were big or like the new generation 7 series nah bro these kidney grills are like lung grills now I will say this, it feels very good that in 2021, BMW is still making a rear-wheel drive, six-speed manly manual car in an M3. Like, props to BMW, man. You know, it can't please everybody, but they've gotten some things right. Like, if you want to get the competition model, that one only comes in the A-speed uh, ZF automatic transmission. And I think you get all-wheel drive, which you can disconnect the rear wheels, and you can get the other one, which is also rear-wheel drive. But you can't get that in a six-speed manual. All right, we got some clear roads right here. Not that I can do much, but I can do a little bit at least. sounds very good too i know how much of that is uh synthetic sound from the from the speakers but it sounds pretty good in the cabin
And that was my first impression of the all new 2021 BMW M3. What kind of G80 content would you guys like to see on my channel? Let me know in the comment section below. Do me a favor guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure and hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That way you're notified the next time I upload a new video. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.